In this lecture, we are going to look at state feedback. State feedback is when the states are fed back so as to shape the response of the system. As can be seen from the illustration, the states are applied into the matrix small letter K. The output of that matrix is compared to the reference input RS to generate the error. The error is in turn applied into the matrix K, capital K, to give an output that becomes the input to the system GS. The matrices small letter K and capital K are selected so as to make the output YS match the input RS. Therefore, state feedback design is essentially selecting the matrices small letter K and capital K so as to make the system behave as is required. For comparison purposes, we have here the illustration for output feedback. As you can see, in output feedback, the output is compared to the reference input to generate the error. And in state feedback, the states are compared to the reference input to generate the error. To analyze state feedback, let's expand the block for the process into a state space model as shown on the illustration. To make it more practical, let's assume that the system represents a fairness temperature control system. In this case, the process is the fairness, and here it is represented by the block GS which in a state space, as a state space model, is represented by the matrices A, B, and C connected as shown on the illustration. The output YT is the actual temperature of the furnace. The input RT is the required temperature for the furnace. UT is the control action, which is the heat input into the furnace. In open loop, that is, before we implement the state feedback, the state equations are x dot equals ax plus bu and y equals cx. We refer to these as the open loop equations. When we close the loop, we notice that u equals r minus kx. If we substitute for u into the open loop equations, we would get the equation x dot equals a minus bk in brackets times x bar plus br and y equals cx. So here we have generated the closed loop equations for the system. From these equations, we can work out uh, the closed loop matrices. We find that these matrices are the closed loop A matrix is A minus BK, the closed loop B matrix is equal to B, and the closed loop C matrix is equal to C. There are two approaches that are used in state feedback design. The first one is direct comparison of the closed loop characteristic equations so as to get the matrix k. The second one is to use the Ackermann's formula so as to get the matrix k. We shall look at each method in terms. In the approach that uses comparison of CLCEs, we first work out the required CLCE. The required CLCE is obtained from the desired closed loop poles. Next, we obtain the expression of the actual CLCE. This expression is obtained 
by putting unknowns in the matrix K and then working out an expression for the actual CLCE using the unknowns. We then compare these two CLCEs and fix values of the unknowns in the matrix K to make the two CLCEs to be equal. Correspondingly, we find the elements of the matrix K. Let's illustrate using an example. In this example, we are given the matrices A, B, and C. We are required to determine the state feedback matrix so as to get closed loopholes at minus 1 plus J, minus 1, minus J, and minus 10. The matrix B is a 3 by 1 matrix and we have three states. Therefore, to square up the matrix BK, matrix K must be a 1 by 3 matrix. We put unknowns K1, K2, and K3 in the matrix K as shown. From the closed loop A matrix, the actual CLCE of the system works out as S cubed plus 6 plus 5K3 in brackets by S squared plus 5 plus 5K2 plus 5K3 in brackets by S plus 5K1 equals 0. From the desired closed loop pose, the desired closed loop characteristic equation works out as S cubed plus 12S squared plus 25S plus 50 equals 0. I am sure you can figure out how we get the required CLCE from the required pole positions. We then compare the actual CLCE to the required CLCE. We, we obtain the elements that make up the matrix K as 10, 2.8 and 1.2. After doing this, we would have completed the design. What will be left is to implement the controller. We note that state feedback is essentially applying gains to the states, adding the resulting weighted outputs, and then comparing the resulting sum to the required input. The respective gains of the states are the elements that we designed for the matrix K. Hence, we can implement state feedback using a summing amplifier. The respective gains are the elements of the matrix K. The output of the summing amplifier is then compared to the set point to give an error and hence a corrective action. For the approach that uses the Ackermann's formula, the first step is to determine the controllability test matrix and its inverse. The second step is to determine the required characteristic polynomial. This polynomial is expressed in the format delta ds equals s to the power n plus alpha 1 s to the power n minus 1 plus alpha 2 s to the power n minus 2 and so on up to plus alpha n. n is the order of the system. Alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha n are coefficients of the terms that make up the characteristic polynomial. The third and final step is to obtain the gains in the matrix K. These are obtained using the Ackermann's formula. The Ackermann's formula is of the structure shown on the slide. The first matrix is a matrix that is made up of zeros and then a one at the end. The second matrix is the inverse of the controllability test matrix. The third matrix is delta DA and is a matrix that is obtained from placing the matrix A in place of S in the expression for the characteristic polynomial.
that is the matrix delta dA equals a to the power n plus alpha 1 a to the power n minus 1 plus alpha 2 a to the power n minus 2 and so on up to plus i is shown on the slide. Let's illustrate using an example. We are given matrices A, B, and C as well as the required pole positions. We need to design a state feedback controller. The first step is to obtain the controllability test matrix. It works out as shown on the slide. The second step is to obtain the closed loop characteristic polynomial. It works out as delta ds equals s squared plus 2s plus 2. The third step is to work out the gains in the matrix K using the Ackermann's formula. Matrix K is a 1 by 2 matrix because there are two states and because B is a 2 by 1 matrix. K works out as 2, 2. In the design examples that we have looked at so far, the required pole positions were given. In real designs, it will be important for the designer to be able to decide on the positions of the closed loop poles. There are some guidelines that can be used to decide on these positions. Some of the guidelines are, one, if a pole or a pair of poles is in the LHP and gives an acceptable response, we leave it as it is. Two, only move unstable poles or poles that are very near the imaginary axis. Three, unstable poles should be reflected in the imaginary axis. Let's illustrate using an example. We are given an open loop TF and we are required to design a state feedback controller. The open loop poles are 0 and minus 1. 1 is an unstable pole, so we reflect it in the imaginary axis so that it becomes minus 1. 0 is too close to the imaginary axis, so we move it further into the LHP so that it becomes minus 2. After doing that, the closed loop characteristic polynomial becomes delta ds equals s squared plus 3s plus 2. To design the state feedback controller, we first realize the open loop tf. The easiest realization that we have picked in this example is the controllable canonical realization. We get the matrices a, b, and c as shown. The next step is to get the inverse of the controllability test matrix. It works out as shown on the slide. After that, we work out the gains in the matrix K using the Ackermann's formula. It works out as K equals 2, 4. The methods that we just described are used to design regulators. A regulator seeks to maintain the system at a steady state output and reject disturbances. An input signal that is used to measure the performance of a regulator is the step input. The steady state output for a step input is given by the limit of SGS RS as s goes to zero. If we apply this formula to the previous example, the steady state output works out as 0 0.1. This formula is important when designing state feedback systems that require a steady state gain.
I will, I will leave you to go and find out how this is done. It is now exercise time. Attempt questions 1, 3, 5, and 6 from chapter 4 tutorial questions. Then submit responses for questions 1, 5, and 6a via the Google Classroom platform.